We have a few slogans we use around here. It's unleash and unwind, play here, get drunk pet dogs, barks and booze are kind of the things we're known for. It's tough, you have a bad day, you come here and this is probably the happiest place you're gonna get to experience. My name is Stephen Oaks. I'm the founder and CEO of Fetch Park. I grew up a Florida State fan. I played baseball at Florida State. I went out to see them play the national championship game in 2013, and somebody had roped off their tailgate and they were letting their dogs run around while they drank. And that was kind of the light bulb moment for me where I was like, I've been around dogs my whole life. I understand dog behavior. I am in the branding and marketing space for alcohol. Like this, this is something that I would love to do. And, and that turned into a, a five-year journey to get the first fetch up and running. You know, because of the uniqueness of the concept, at the time there was nothing like it. So I heard no from 86 banks. It was the same thing every, every time. They loved the concept, but where am I getting my numbers from? There was nothing they could compare it to. I had to privately fund everything. I had to reach out to VCs, I had to reach out to investors and, and sell them on this crazy idea I had. From the minute I dove all in, like there was nothing that was gonna stop me from making this happen. Steven was turned down by so many different people that could have helped his dream, who could have invested in his dream. And if you believe in what you're doing, there's no one stopping you from something you truly believe in. And Steven Oaks is a prime example that they didn't believe, and now they see. So the next time I come to you, you're gonna pay double. Steven, get that money. So for each dog to be able to come in, they've gotta be at least four months of age. They've gotta be vaccinated. And if the dog is eight months or older, they must be spayed or neutered. And that is all to make sure that the park is as safe as possible. The crown jewel of the park is a 1967 Airstream that we have converted into a coffee bar in the mornings, and then it switches over to beer, wine, and liquor in the afternoon and evenings. We have, we have Wi-Fi throughout, we have outdoor TVs. We have a water trough where the dogs can go splash in the water if they get hot. We have a bath area, we have plenty of shaded seating. And then of course we have bark rangers to make sure, you know, all the dogs are playing nice. I want people to want to come to work. And I feel like the more you can build a community in your work environment, the more you're gonna want to enjoy coming to work. We have regulars who come two, three times a day. And that's really what makes it special, seeing how excited their pups get to be here. You know, getting to see the joy that Fetch brings them on a day-to-day -day basis is awesome. I wanted to create an environment where people wanted to socialize. You know, the events play a big part in that. We do about 15 to 20 large events a year, and each week we do about three to four smaller events. Once a month we do a Could It Bay singles night. Outside of that we do Barks and Banter, which is our live comedy night. We do Unleash and Unplugged, which is our summer live music series. We do movie nights. What Steven has done with Fetch Park is like-minded individuals coming together to share, you know, experiences. And I think that's the dopeness. Like, even if you don't, you know, have a dog, that's why Fetch Park can be a thing. You know, like, we're, you're not going to cities and you're celebrating dog parks. No, Fetch Park is like a vibe. I'm gonna get a drink while I'm at the dog park. Where they do that at? Since the day we opened, you know, media was everywhere. Uh, within six months, Travel Channel visited the park. We went viral on social media. We've had people from all over the country, actually all over the world, come visit Fetch. We actually haven't spent a dollar on marketing yet. Right now, we're either in permitting or construction, and we've also got three more locations that we haven't announced yet. All those should be opening within the next year. You know, I, I've been extremely lucky in my life to be surrounded at one point or another by extremely motivated and successful people. I've seen these people who started from this small dream of theirs, and I've seen them succeed, and I've seen them hold on to that success. And really, that's been the key for me. Atlanta in general is, is a melting pot. I mean, nobody is really from Atlanta. Everyone moves to Atlanta and it makes it tougher to, to connect with people. And seeing what we've built here, knowing that, it really makes it that much more special to see the community we've built.